afternoon, all my friends and family of the Country Music Cruise. Thanks for tuning in here to All Access Pass. I'm your cruise host, Jason, and each and every single day we'll be hosting another one of these talk shows for you where we'll have a legend in the seat next to myself or Ms. Lorianne Crook will be hosting as well. Today is the Super Bowl, and I am very excited for our, uh, my, my partner in crime up here. If you've done the Country Music Cruise before, you know we like to get this man up on stage and on a microphone because you never know what he's going to say, but it's always entertaining. One of the winningest coaches in the history of collegiate and professional football. His record is absolutely incredible. He is one of only three coaches in the history of the game who've won a college championship and a professional championship. Of course, many of you remember Super Bowl 30 for the Dallas Cowboys. Do me a favor. You know him as the coach. Welcome out, Mr. Barry Switzer. How you doing, sir? How you doing, Jason? Very good, sir. Very good. Can I have a seat? You can have a seat, sir. Please, please right. be seated. It's not every day, Coach Switzer. I'm not as hot you as you are, I don't think. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, they got you. They got you out there. I heard you talking about you're not... Hot. I no, thought you're hot. Your wife thinks you're hot. Your well, wife is hot. I think my wife's hot. Yeah, as I'm married up. Brittany is. I'm married up, sir. As I'm sure wait, we can Wait till you all see Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> she's hiding over yeah. there, but she's. Uh, I'm a lucky man, I can tell you that. I'm married it's up. It's great I, to be back with you. Is you I, I'm, I, I'm glad I really to have you back. I really appreciate you having the back of the T-shirt this year. I've been here four years, and I finally made the back of the T-shirt. Yeah, it's a big so day. I've got a nice you guys. It's a big day for Coach Switzer. <laughs> Yeah, He's been bugging you. us. We wanted to leave yeah, him off, but we bet. finally thought, you know, we probably should get him on there eventually. It's a, uh, <laughs> so I want to chat with you a little bit today, Coach. Obviously, today's the big game. We'll, we'll get into that in, in a little bit later. I wanted to start by asking you, uh, start by asking you about, about your history. Obviously, you're, you're wearing an impressive piece of hardware there on your, on your left hand. Tell us a little bit about how, how you come to be a coach. Well, first of all, for the ladies in the audience, I've got to ask you a question. Is five and a half carats too much for a man to wear? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really? Not, thank you. <laughs> hey, listen, Jason, I uh, I never planned to go in coaching. I was uh, an athlete that came out of a small town in South Arkansas. I went to University of Arkansas on a scholarship in 1955. I'm an old son of a bitch like most of us here today. <laughs> but I go to Arkansas, and, and uh, I planned to play football and get a business degree. And the next thing I was going to do is have to serve my country, which I did, the United States Army. And, uh, and Thank you uh, for your service, sir. Proud to be a veteran. And... Uh, then, uh, and I would stand for the national anthem any time and put my hand over the heart, I promise you. And if I coached the damn players, they would too, I promise your ass. And so, but anyway, we're not here to get political and stay away from that, but I'm just telling you how I feel. You know, said I can say anything I want to, yes, so sir. I'm going to do it. But uh, I never planned to coach. I was one of those guys, like most kids go off school, you don't know what the hell you're going to do when you're 17, 18 years old. What do you know about life? What do you want to do? I didn't know, and they stuck me in physical education, Jason, and I knew I didn't like that. You know, theory of theory of uh, basketball, theory of football, theory of whatever, 101. So the next thing I knew was I didn't like it. And uh, I graduated five years later with 154 hours of my transcript. Only took 124 to graduate with, but it was a business degree. And business school wouldn't accept my education hours, so I wasted one year. And I went off to serve the Army, and I came back, and I was going to go to law school. And uh, thank God we have got too many lawyers today. I've just been another one of them out there, I guess. But I had one here. Lindsay, are you here? Yeah, I hear you, Lindsay Bailey, my lawyer friend from uh, Norman, Oklahoma. But uh, I was planned to do that. My brother went on to law school and graduated, but I didn't. And uh, Frank Broyles, when I, I came back, he said, I want you to coach. I'd coached the uh, freshman team that year before I went into service with Fred Akers. And uh, I was on the staff with Johnny Majors later on at Arkansas. Johnny, because we hired him next year because I was hired on coaching staff. A bunch of guys. And I'll, I'll get around to my Oklahoma career later. But, but what happens is that, is that uh, Frank says to me, why don't you live in the athletic dormitory, scout for me, run the scout team, and, and uh, control the dorm, and, uh, and I'll pay you $400 a month. And I was single and uh, being on a college campus, not bad. I had a brand-new car, just got out of the Army, and, Next thing I know that I'm uh, going to be a coach. And you know what? He said, you can always go to law school next year if you didn't like it. So I became a coach, and I took that avenue, that road, and you never know where it leads you, and I had a pretty good run. <laughs> I can tell you this. Did anybody follow that? I just go so damn yeah. fast. My EDD kicks in. Service, I take off in Arkansas, roads. damn players would stand if you were the coach, and then you found yourself not going back to law school. I think that's the gist of where we were there. Uh, now, Coach, obviously many folks remember you from your Oklahoma days uh, as a Sooner. Tell us a little bit about how you get into Oklahoma and 
What was it like being the coach of the Oklahoma City? Well, first of all, I got the opportunity. Frank Brawls gave me at Arkansas. I was my coach, and uh, he gave me the opportunity to get in coaching. I liked it. We were having success at Arkansas. And the next thing I knew, I was a coach. I spent uh, six years there as assistant coach at Arkansas. Jim McKenzie got the job at Oklahoma. Uh, Dick, Doug Dickey got the job at Tennessee a couple of years before, and he wanted me to go to Tennessee with him. Uh, Hayden Fry was on our staff, and he got the job at SMU, and he wanted me to go with him. But I didn't want to go to those schools, so I knew I was had a re- great relationship with Jim McKenzie. I believed in him who got the job at Oklahoma. So I knew I was going to go wherever he went. So I will go to Oklahoma, and after uh, one year there, he had a tragic uh, – he died at 37 years of age at a heart attack, and uh, Chuck Fairbanks was named Hope head coach, and uh, he was there a few years, and J- – Chuck called me in my office, his office one day in 1972 and says, I've been going to DFW every weekend the last few weeks uh, to meet with uh, the guy that uh, Sullivan owned the New England Patriots. And he says, and uh, I said, I'm going to take the New England Patriot job. And I said, you what? And he says, I want you to go with me. I said, I want this job. And he says, well, if you don't get this job, you can go to New England with me. And, of course, about three days later, they named me the head coach at the University of Oklahoma. Then uh, yeah, I had uh, a great run at Oklahoma, and uh, it was uh, really. And, and I got to say this, and it's not bragging; it's the damn truth. My coaches, my players, in that 16 years I coached, had the winningest record in college football today since Newt Rockney and Frank Leahy at Notre Dame. So it's uh, it's 156, 157 victories, only 29 losses, four ties. Back when you played ties and. With three national championships, 16 years, and we won 12 Big Eight Conference championships in 16 years, and finished second four times in Nebraska. And the rest of the time, I kicked her ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about how you felt about Nebraska, but I think we already know. I don't think no, there's certain roads we need to Tom take. Osborne but. and all those guys, but uh, I love those guys in the back of the room. I got two. I got my crew back here. I bring them on the trip. I, about eight of us are back here in the back: Curly, Larry, Mo, Jim, and the rest of them. Robert we, e. Oh, Robert E. Lee. We Robert got my e. Lee. Rob Bob White. Got We're not making White. it up. This is their they, name. No, they, they really is... are. They mean these guys, and they started tearing down statues. I, I said to me, I started tweeting at this out. What the hell are they doing? I said the horses didn't have a damn thing to do with it. You know, <laughs> and it wasn't fair. I love the horses. <laughs> I'm a ho- from Oklahoma. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but just making a joke out of things. You know, you got to have humor. You kind of have to. You know, we've we've gotten off things that happen. I tell you what, Coach, I want to ask you a couple more questions. But before we do, we're going to go to a quick break. Do not turn the channel. Do not leave the room. We'll be back in just a moment with more with the Coach. All right. <clears throat> All right. We're back. We're back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for not turning the channel. Thanks for not running away. We are back. I'm here with the Coach. Now, Coach, when we left, we talked a little about your time at Oklahoma. Tell us about how you get to be a Dallas Cowboy. Well, it's, that's an easy one. Uh, I coached at Arkansas. I coached two guys named Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones. I coached those two guys at uh, – and in 1961, 62, both of them were there, and I coached till uh, 66 to when I went to Oklahoma. So all through their career, I was the coach on the staff. I knew them well. Had to put up with them in the dorm and all that when they were <laughs> freshmen. And, and uh, then, uh, of course, I, Jimmy would never admit this, but Jimmy worked for me for four years, Jimmy Johnson at Oklahoma. And he, I was off head coached. Yeah, when he he was my defensive line coach, but he had never admit to that. But knowing his ego, but but anyway, so uh, what happens? You pay Jerry attention, Jones, you get the tidbits, Jerry friends. Jones is uh, uh, a guy that did something at Arkansas that's never been done before. He started fullback one year, and next to years an offensive line as a starter. So he played an offensive guard one year and fullback the next. But I mean, but the vice versa. But uh, those two guys I knew very well. I hired Jimmy at Oklahoma. And then when Jerry bought the Dallas Cowboys, I said, um, you know, I said, Gil Brandt calls me and says, you know a guy named Jerry Jones from Arkansas? And I said, yeah, I know him well. He says, he's buying the Cowboys. I said, really? I knew he made a lot of money in the oil and gas business in Oklahoma. I didn't know he made that much. He bought or paid $140 million. They say it's worth $4 billion today, but he paid $140 million for the Cowboys. And uh, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry and I were close, and he made his money in Oklahoma. He came there in 73 when I was named the head coach at Oklahoma. We socialized together. We ran around together. Did, I didn't run where he, he always ran, but I was with Jerry a lot. And uh, so when he got the cowboy job, this is March of, uh, of 28, 1994. 
Now, how I remember that is because I had a colonoscopy that morning. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> 30 in the morning. Really stuck I with really you, did coach? No, really there's someone, stuck is there with a correlation you. between Jerry Jones and the colonoscopy? But no, it's not. There's that's no a trivia question for but later. That's, really, that's how I remember it, damn it. It was March 28th. I get this call, and I've been reading the papers all along, the Dallas papers. You heard it on television. You know, there's a few. You know, they won two Super Bowls in a row at Dallas, and that uh, Jerry and Jimmy weren't getting along, and there might be a divorce and all this. And, and I'm listening to this, and I, but I'm getting information from coaches that they coach for me or they're coaching for Dallas saying, hey, they, you know, the Camelot's not what Camelot, everybody thinks Camelot is. There's not a lot of love, love going on down here right now. And I said, yeah, I know what's behind the scenes, but – <clears throat> what happens is that that morning I get a call after I'm home getting this colonoscopy. My daughter picked me up. I go home. and live in my townhouse. And all of a sudden the phone rings and Kathy answers the phone. And Kathy says, Jerry Jones wants to talk to you. And I said, I, I can't talk to him right now. They had that beset and all that. I'll call him back this afternoon. I call him back that, as, at, that afternoon. I say, Jerry, coach. And he says, Barry, you want to coach the Cowboys? And I said, I didn't know the damn job was open. He says, well, it's fixing to be. I said, well, call me when the damn job's open then. So I hung up, and the next day he fired Jimmy, and then he calls me and says, come on to Dallas. That was my interview for the Dallas Cowboy job. <laughs> That's strictly it. He knew me. He trusted me. He believed in me. He knew he had a great relationship with me, and that was more important. And that's always important in life. Anybody, you, you hire someone, you just don't take a telephone book, pick out a damn name, think I'll call him and hire him. You know what I mean? Our coaches directory. You sure. hire people you know, you believe in, you have a feeling for, an association with. He knew I would be loyal, and uh, and uh, I've always been loyal to friends. And, uh, and, he, and Jerry said, I've never had but two guys on my list to coach the Dallas Cowboys, Jimmy Johnson and uh, Jerry Jones. I mean, Barry Switzer. And that's what Jerry told me. Jerry, that's right. Jerry, got Jerry, his head, but now, the Jerry Jones, what? Jerry, Jerry always won, but he's smart enough to say that 120 yards long, that 53 and a third wide is yours. Everything outside of it is mine. If, and then when it comes to dollars, then I get involved at 53 and a third and 120 long. And uh, what you have to, if he writes the big checks and free agency or whatever to do it. But that's, that's how it all happened is relationships. Jerry never considered anyone else but me and Jimmy. He roomed with Jimmy while he's playing with him, and therefore I was in second place on the short list of two people. And I got in the second round. He said, you know, the, the thing I like to say about this, when I, I, I stayed four years, we probably should have won two Super Bowls. My first year we should have won the Super Bowl. But you all remember the game down with 21 to nothing in San Francisco out there for the NFC Championship? Yeah. We're down 21 to nothing in the first five minutes of that game. That's like a horror movie watching this. I mean, I'm on the side. What the hell coaching got to do with it? I said, don't throw interceptions. Don't fumble. Don't put the ball on the ground. Don't make mistakes. We'll win this son of a bitch, right? Hey, what do they do? First play of the game, Troy Aikman takes a three-step drop, tries to throw a slant, and, and Ricky Jackson intercepts the damn thing and runs in the end zone because they had a zone blitz on, throwing a Mike slant to Michael. He jogs 20 yards in the end zone. And they, we're down, first snap of the ball game, 7 to nothing. They kick off to us. He takes the ball, Kevin Williams out of the end zone, up the front bit, sidelines, right in front of me, fumbles it right here at the 32-yard line, and they covered the damn ball. They have a six-play drive. They're in the end zone. It's down 14 to nothing. There's three minutes gone on the clock. Next thing happens, we, they kick off again. We kick off, they kick off again. We get the ball, and, and all of a sudden, Michael, ja uh, Michael Irvin catches a post route for 18 yards. Pope, uh, Eric Pope knocks it out of his hands. Merlin Hank. Picks it up on a rebound and goes 32 yards for a touchdown. And we're down 21 to nothing. What the hell's coaching got to do with that? <laughs> I told him what happened to make those kind of mistakes. But you know what? You know what? You know what? I, I said this last, uh, the last time I think about it. You know what you say to a team? You got to think, and I'm thinking over it. What the hell do you tell the team when you're down 21 to nothing the first five minutes of the game? Your damn defense hasn't even been out there yet. You had a chance to play. What do you tell them, Jason? You know what I told them? Yes, I called them all up. I had them all in front of me right there. The offense would go back out in the field after <clears throat> this is – I've seen this, and they've seen it all happen. They're all shell-shocked. They don't know what the, you know, what the hell. And I've called them up. Hey, I said, guys, you know what's great? And I remember, never forget looking at Nate Newton. Nate Newton, big ass. His ass is that wide. That's, what I tell you. That's why I take the play. But I'm setting big guard, and all of them in front of me, they're doing A, and Jay Novacek and all of them. All of them getting ready to go on the field. The offense, after they kicked off, we got the ball 20-yard line. That's when they put it to 20 when they kicked off. So I said, you know what's great about being down 21 nothing, guys? You know what's great about this? You know what's great about being down being 21 nothing? The first five minutes of a ball game? 
They think I'm nuts. They look at me, what the hell's wrong with him? I said, you know what's nuts? I mean, what's that great? I'm nuts. You know, what, you know what's great about it? They said, you got 55 minutes to get back in this son of a bitch. <laughs> it, you did. Now, you could be down 21 to nothing with five minutes to go. You ain't got a chance, right? But with 20, 55 minutes in pro ball, you got a chance. It's a long time. Hey, you know what? We get back 21 to 14 in the second quarter. So we got back in the ball game, made us close, and we had a chance. If we had destruct, self-destructed, we won the Super Bowl. That, but again, to make a short, long story short, we won the son of a bitch the next year, okay? Super Bowl 30. <laughs> All right. As you can tell, I have an animated guest with me here today and what, uh, with a steel trap of a memory, impressively. He knows exactly how many downs and plays and yards. I lived it. I lived it. You know it when you live it. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Don't turn the channel. Don't walk away. Back with our final segment Brittany. with the coach. There's Brittany. Stand up. Everybody see Brittany. <laughs> hey, hey, here we are. Thanks for not going away. I'm back with the coach for segment number three. Now, when we left, we were talking about uh, Super Bowl 30. You, you I don't even remember what that we were talking about. What, but that was 30 <laughs> you won a Super ago. Bowl, sir. You oh, won a Super we Bowl. Super Bowl 30. That's right. We were played Pittsburgh. I thought we'd win. We were 10-point favorite. Should win. And, uh, uh, we had beaten them every time we'd played them in uh, four years uh, that I was at the Cowboys. Remember, I was the coach that Jerry brought in and said, you know, that uh, 500 teams could, 500 coaches out there could win a Super Bowl with this team. You know what? When I left two years later and won the Super Bowl, I said, Jerry, you, you said there were 500. There are 499 out there. Find you one of them. I've left. He hadn't been able to find one yet. But, they, <laughs> but, Sweet but, uh, but anyway, uh, the Super Bowl, it's the biggest stage in sports. I'm not going to make a lie of it. We all talk about it. We've got a lot of great sports fans here. I've seen them all wear their jerseys in. And uh, the greatest stage in sports is the Super Bowl. One game no, draws no more attention than that. You can play a World Series. You got, what, you win it in four, seven, you win it yeah. in six, you win it in seven. You know, but, but, but it's, it's all a bunch of games. And the NBA, basketball is like that. But it comes down, you play the one game and for the championship. and. Uh, no more hype, no more build up. There is, and so it was a it was a great moment. I, you know, the college game is a better game. I love the college game because of the players and the relationships. Because it's a different thing. Coaches are motivated differently. Pro football is nothing about getting the Super Bowl. It's a billion billion dollar game, and it's uh, about it's a big business. And uh, so what happens in pro, in college football is about developing young men for the next 40, 50, 60 years to live and win some football games along the way. And that's what most college coaches want to do and make happen. But uh, pro football is winning Super Bowls, Big the biggest stage in sports, and that's the Super Bowl, which so, we've got today. Speaking of, yeah, uh, obviously I'm sure we have some inquiring minds out there. We have a big game uh, with us tonight. We have uh, New England versus uh, Philadelphia. What's your thoughts on the game tonight? Well, you know, they, I thought earlier in the year I watched pro football, and I watched earlier in the year Philadelphia have a great run. What were they, 8-1, something like that? Yeah. Something like that early on. Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz was having yep. a great run, and I saw him play in college at North Dakota State, thought he was really good. I didn't know he was going to be the – I saw him play twice, win two national championships in double-A okay. ball at uh, Dallas at, uh, in the Cowboy Stadium. But uh, uh, they were doing great, and all of a sudden that, that happens. But the guy that came in, you can't blame – Nick, Nick, Nick Knowles. Foles. Nick Knowles. Foles. Is Knowles is the actor. Nick Nolte. Uh, Nick Foles. Hulk, is it Coles? Foles with an F. F O L E S. I thought it was N O L E S. No, it's okay. Foles, okay. It's Foles. I missed the F. Okay. Don't miss the Thank F, you. Coach. Okay, don't miss that. Nick Foles, okay. Nick, Nick. Anyway, he's done a good job, but they're seven and nine team. Now think about that. They, they, they're less than five hundred, and they were in the Super Bowl. They're seven and lost nine, and they're playing a team that has won in the last seventeen years, has uh, won fifteen championships. ACF championship and finished second twice. They've won over 200 games, only lost 63 in 17 years. You know, and why? They got a quarterback. You know, you say, yeah, they got a coach too. But I'm going to tell you something. The players and talent make it happen first. You can't, you don't win unless you have it. Brady. You got too many coaches. Yeah, Brady is is, uh, is phenomenal. But, you know, he's a low draft choice. You never know what they turn out to be. But he's been a great pro f player. Uh they're, they're, both teams are like really true superstars, except for, you know, New England Patriots. And uh, with Brady, he is the true superstar. The rest of them are just kind of a bunch of players. Do you think Brady – there's a lot of discussion as to who is the, who's the greatest of all time. Where do you think 
Brady, what do you think Brady sits on that list? Well, well, he wins this and that. He's going to win six Super Bowls. No one else has done that. What his record is in, in pro football, they don't compare Same. with it. They don't compare for, for winning percentages. Brady's, I'm serious. When you think about in pro football, when you for 17 years, you win 200 games, you lose only 63. You only lose two NFC championships and you win 15. And you're going to win your sixth Super Bowl today if they win. No other quarterback's ever done that. So he's going to have to be the best all time. And, but, and uh, he's did it with the lack of truly superstars, you know. They've lined up right. They play hard. They believe. I mean, they're psychologically, the game is played 90% from here up, from the neck up. And it's, it's psychology. It's, it's uh, what you believe. And, and uh, those guys believe they can win, and it makes a difference. What do you think it comes down to tonight? Obviously, Philadelphia is starting a second-string quarterback, New England. Uh, Gronk is, is healthy and coming back. So they're pretty much, uh, pretty much they're, they're at full speed. But uh, Philly's tough, obviously. Philly's a tough team. Yep. They've got a great running, a couple of great running Worst backs. Worst place to play in pro football. I hated the old vet stadium. You go there. It's the only <laughs> field that Jerry Jones wouldn't come down on the sidelines. I said, if you do wear a helmet, you'll get hit in the whiskey bottle. <laughs> I've seen they him throw snowballs they, at they Santa Claus. Well, I no, know. I'm telling you, they're bad. And the old VFW Philly fans are the toughest in the world. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I always said the team that gets to the Super Bowl, the team in the playoff that is the healthiest, without a doubt, if you're the healthiest team, all 53 of your players are ready to play and healthy, and you got the best quarterback, you're going to win the football game. And uh, that's what you got to have. A, you don't have a cut dog chance in football unless you got a quarterback. Any level, of, any competition you play in, Jason, you got to have a quarterback, someone who can win the game. And if you don't have that, you can't win. Now, when you got, you know, a good team around you and no quarterback, that's what, you know, it, it's, 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 it's tough to win. And, and, and it's, uh, it happens in football. But you got to have a quarterback. You don't have a chance. Philadelphia already came out and said on record that they're listening to offers for Foles already for next year. Do you think that is a – what do you think of a political move about saying your quarterback that's going about to, about to start the Super Bowl is available yeah. next year? Is that well, that's, undermining that's pro to... football. No, because he'll, he's going to get a pay raise, too. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you bet. You bet fo Foles. Foles. Yes, sir. So I want to make sure I got to put that F in there. <laughs> but Always get the you know, F in there, Coach. Yeah, Come, get on. The F. Come on. But if he's uh, – no, he's going to get a big payday, too. But pro football, you know, in pro football, you only got 53 of them. You get them in there. I, uh, the next day, you might be out of there. It might be on the waiver wire. They, uh, yeah. You never see them again. You never know who they are. You don't know anything about them. You don't know what – Never been in a home. You don't have a dad in a home. You don't know his siblings' passions or goals. That's irrelevant in pro football. It's not in college. You know all those things. It is. I mean, it's a fascinating business. You look, I'm sure many of you saw, big trade just happened. I mean, uh, Kansas City sends Alex Smith to, to Washington. They don't even tell Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins now believes right. he's pretty much obviously going to be go to the waiver wires. It's nothing business. It's nothing but business. It's a business, right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, if you could go back, and I, I think I kind of know this answer, and if you could go back, would you rather coach pro ball or college ball? I love the college game because you know what? You're dealing with a bunch of young men that uh, 17, 18 years old, and you got them for four or five years, they're an extension of your family. And I, like I said a minute ago, I think every coach, I know so many college coaches. Back when I coached, and I'm sure it hadn't changed today, the philosophy is that, hey, we want to win, too. We want to win championships. But along the way, those coaches have more influence on those young men's lives than any of them damn professors in any of those classes they go to on that campus. And they'll learn more from them than any damn book they ever carry to one of those damn classes if they pay attention to what their coaches tell them and teach them. And I tell all my players and all my team meetings when I get those freshmen in there, I said, you know, I tell them the same things. If you stick, if you stay, you will play. Don't be in a hurry. Some guys are going to play quicker than others. The ones that know how to practice and bust their ass and are smart play quicker than the guys that are more talented than they are. But through rote coaching and things will happen. Good things will happen for you if you stick with it. Those that stay will play. So don't be in a hurry to be in, uh, take your time, get an education, and we'll help you along the way because it's, uh, you got 40, 50, 60 years of living, and we want to make sure you – have an opportunity to be successful when you do it. And you've coached some characters. I mean, oh, yeah. you Boz always, comes you to always, mind first and yeah, foremost. But, but, but you know, let me tell you something. Everybody's oh, the Boz. You know, he's a, he said outlandish things. He never was in drug problems or on steroids. He didn't, he didn't do any. He didn't drink. He didn't do any of those things. He didn't smoke. And uh, he didn't uh, do those type of drugs, street drugs. And he graduated in three and a half years and got a master's and was the first player picked in the draft. And because of the drugs, he lost uh, the steroids. He 
wasn't able to play pro football but three years. But he started all the three years he was in pro football, so he wasn't a bust at all. He started for Seattle, and it, but he was a damn guy that uh, pissed you off every once in a while. <laughs> I'm sure you had one or two uh, in your time, and I won't, I won't, I won't tell you to divulge right now. But I'll tell you what, for everyone that's live in the room right now, hang out. Do not go anywhere. If you're watching on TV, we're going to wrap this up. But if you're live in the room, hang out. We're going to take a few more minutes with the coach once we get off. The, we got any cowboy fans off the show here. Yeah, I'm sure we got a cowboy hey, fan. Hey, too. a few cowboys. If we got any, hey. We got any Patriot fans? Oh, one or two. Eagles fans. Eagles. 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 A couple of strong. All folks. right. I so know we got some Green Bay because yeah, there there. always is. Hang, hang tight for me. Hang tight, Coach. Let's wrap this up. I'm your Crusoe's Jason. This is Coach Barry Switzer. Thank you so much for tuning into your first edition of All Access Pass. You can find us on TV every single day on the uh, Country Music Cruise 411 channel. Tune in each and every day. We'll have another celebrity in the seat over here, another star. Today, certainly no exception. Do me a favor. If you're sitting in the room, let's hear it for Coach Barry Switzer. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.